And it's 2 o'clock, so let's go ahead and get started. This is episode 64 of Unhindered Coding with Nick McPhee and Izitsu, who is here again. Thank you for joining, as always. We are going to uh, kick back into Advent of Code fun. Um, we're going to do day two, the exercise from day two, which is rock, paper, scissors, plus some other odds and ends. Um, and so we'll be doing that. Uh, so what's the problem? And we'll be doing all this in Rust, um, yada, yada, yada. Um, so the elves are uh, doing rock, paper, scissors to decide whose tent gets to be closest to the snack storage. Right, you know, so we have story. Um, and it's the standard rock, paper, scissors. So rock beats scissors, scissors cuts paper, paper covers rock. Um, and there's this elf gives you an encrypted strategy guide, which is your input. Um, and we can look at that because I've downloaded the input. Um, so we've got these. Well, there we go. Marketplace. Thank you. Um, many, many rows of data that are pairs of characters. The left column is always A, B, or C, and the right column is always X, Y, or Z. Um, and uh, the first is the what your opponent is going to do. So if your opponent... Uh, if there's an A in the first column, your opponent's going to play rock. B, they're going to play paper. C for scissors. And then they say the second column is, and then they disappear. Because that's the kind of thing that happens when you write puzzles. Um, convenient plot device. And uh, presumably the second column is what you should do. Now, we could just compute that. If we know they played rock, we should always play paper if we want to maximize our score. But um, they aren't, they don't want you to win every time because winning every time would be suspicious. So, what they've done is they've given you the second column that is what you should do. And the intent is that that's, if you follow the, the suggestions in the second column, you'll win but you won't necessarily look suspicious in doing so. Um, and the winner of the tournament is the player with the highest score. Your total score is the sum of your scores for each round. The score for a single round is this, it, it's a little weird. It's the score for the shape you selected. So you get one point for playing rock, two for playing paper, and three for, for playing scissors. So this is, um, you know, not part of the standard rock, paper, scissors. It's not a scoring. You just win or lose. Um, so here you get a score for what you play plus the score for the outcome of the round. Zero if you lost, three if it was a draw, and six if you won. So you could you could lose and still get six po three points by playing scissors. So you get zero for losing, but you get three points for playing scissors, which is... Um, you know, only one less than if you drew with rock. Um, and if you played three for scissors and you got a draw, you'd have a total of six, which again is only one less than winning with rock. Um, so that's somewhat odd scoring. Whatever. You know, we don't really care. Uh, we're just here to solve the problem. Um, so we're uh, going to assume that the second... Um, column is what we're supposed to play and we're supposed to compute our total score if everything goes exactly according to the um, strategy guide. So that's what that's our deal. So we need to loop over all these games and for each game we need to compute our score which is going to be the sum of what we played and the sum of the outcome of the game. Okay? Uh, so, um, I copied over a bit of day one, um, so I've got my make Clippy yell at me a lot, um, standard FS, because we're going to need to read the file, um, and the input file name, um, and then I figured we'd probably want some kind of 
Enum for rock, paper, scissors. And I took advantage of the fact that we can assign values to enums to go ahead and assign the values that are described in the problem statement. So uh, where'd that go? Yeah, one rock is one, two is paper is two, and scissors is three. So I went ahead and assigned one, two, and three there. So we can do things like cast scissors to be a U8, and we should get three. Um, and we can see that actually happen. Um, and lo and behold, we get that scissors is indeed three. So we can uh, do that casting to turn uh, decisions into values if we went. Well, hello, Agafa. I haven't seen you in a while. Wonderful to see you back. Um, we are doing the um, advent of code uh, and working on day two, um, which is implementing some rock, paper, scissors silliness. So, um, so that was sort of the setup I've got, and, and now we should actually attempt to do the thing. Um, so, because it's easier than thinking, um, yeah, here's the... I should have copied this part over too. Um, so we'll grab the contents of the file, get rid of that little print line. Um, so, um, and I want, I'm just gonna plop input file in here. Um, so that's gonna open the input file and give us a uh, great big string um, and at some point, there probably is an argument for not reading the entire file into a string. The file's big enough here that, you know, really uh, we should, what, what are we looking at? We're looking at 2,500 lines. We don't have to read the whole thing into a string and then pass the string around. On the other hand, we live in a world where memory is cheap and we have lots of it. And so I'm not going to lose sleep over it. Um, but it probably would make more sense to um, process this like one line at a time rather than read the whole thing. Whatever. So we are going to need to split by lines. Um, so we're going to have contents dot so I'll do this dot split and we can split by new line so that's going to give us our lines and then each line we have to process so each line is a game um, and we could try to do all this in this but I think I'm going to make a function that processes each game so we'll map process game uh, and that'll return uh, the score for that game and then we can just sum everything up and that let total score will be that and then we'll print uh, the total score was total score. Boop, 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 boop. So that's the structure that I'm imagining um, all of this having. Um, and we'll need to implement a function process game, which is going to take a, oops, ah, a line, which is uh, a string slice, and we're going to then need to take that line and, oh, and it was going to return a score, uh, let's just say U size. I mean, in fact, well, let's actually do U8. I mean, the score can't be bigger than um, uh, 3 plus 6, so the score is never bigger than 9. Uh, so let's go ahead and just return a U8. Um, and let's do to do bang uh, and make sure that we're 
actually compilating. Um, why are we grumpy here? Oh, we didn't return anything. Um, okay, boom. Uh, that takes care of that problem. Why are you being fussy? Oh, I forgot the explanation mark. Duh. Uh, total score. I bet we need to... Yeah, we don't know what the type is. Um, so, let's see. If we've got a bunch of U8s and we're going to sum them up. Um, the sum can't be a U8. Uh, I don't know, let's do a U32. Ought to be plenty. Uh, and why are we being crabby? Oh, we can't sum up U8s to get U32s because it doesn't know how to convert. So, foo. Well, let's just make that U32 and then that problem will go away. Okay. So everything compiles. Yay! And that's all we care about is compiling, right? Um, and that was a joke. So, um, we really have done an awful lot of it. We just need to process the game. So, uh, we need to uh, parse the line into two parts. Um, so, dot... Well, it's, that would be a little silly. Split on white space. And then we want to map uh, we want to convert the character into a rock, paper, or scissors. So we want to have some function that maps um, rock, paper, um, those characters into this enum. And so we could actually have a from trait that does that. Um, yeah, maybe that's a useful thing to do. Now, what I'm not clear on, so we would say impl from char for RPS, uh, and then that will require adding the from method. And now here, we can map RPS colon colon from. Oh, except it won't be from a character. It'll actually be from a stir slice. And then so that would give us vectors of um, oh no that's not right because this is mapping across the pair and I'm applying it to oh no no it is right because we've got this is just the two no, two letters this splits us so that we have an iterator over the two we map this, we should get a pair of rock, paper, scissors. Um, and so we ought to be able to, we've got two things. Actually, so I think at this point, I'm gonna stop trying to do everything all in one deal. So let um, our move and our move and their move be that and then it does probably make sense to put this down there um, and 
This is grumpy Y. Oh, because I put this there. Okay. Now this doesn't work because we whoop ah we get this is giving us back an iterator thing and we can't just turn that into um a pair um with some sort of pattern matching or something so so we could say parts um and then we could say let our move be parts. Oh, we'd have to collect into a something. Can we do like first? No, we will have to collect this into a something. Dot collect. Um, And we could do that and let their move be parts one. And it doesn't like this because it doesn't know the type. So we need to explicitly collect that into something. We'll say back RPS. There we go. And why is this grumpy? Oh. So do I want to copy? Do I care? I don't think I care. So I think I could just say that. Um, I don't think there's any reason to take ownership that I can think of. Um, so... Now, the score then is going to be the score of our move our move as u eight and I'll put parens around that so it's clearer plus um then we have to score the game. Um, so I could say game score, our move. Woo. Oh, come on. Their move. Um, and then... Now I wonder, do I want game score to be a floating function? Or do I want it to be a trait of rock, paper, scissors? So it would be like our move dot score game, open paren, their move. Hmm. Actually, let's make it a trait. Let's do our move dot game score, their move. Um, and now game score doesn't exist, so we have to impl that. Impl uh, RPS, uh, let's say, oh, we probably want this to be a U32 anyway. Um, so. Uh, FN game score reference to self reference to uh, so uh, their move is a reference to an RPS and it returns a U32 to do bang bloop okay and then why are you grumpy ah uh, that's because that's a reference, so we have to do something like that. But then I think we have an ownership problem, don't we? Yeah. <sighs> um, well, yeah, so, I mean, it, it is slow, so I'm 
Wagafa's comment about trying to actually, you know, write a decent piece of code. Um, it is definitely slower. Like we spent all of Wednesday doing one, the two parts of day one. Um, but I'm trying to learn something rather than just like score points. Um, and one nice thing about streaming on Twitch and having you folks is it helps keep me honest. Like if I do this on my own, it's really easy to get sloppy. Um, but when I know there are people watching, it's like, oh, well, I probably ought to behave. Um, uh, oh, I see. And then is it to saying instead of collect, we could do next and unwrap. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. That, I, that makes more sense. Um, so that goes like that. And then our move becomes parts.next.unwrap. Um, and I'm not going to like the unwrap. I mean, since part of the point is having anyhow in, in here um, is to not have um, unwrap. So we'll want to undo that. Um, and have this return a result type instead. Um, oh, so no, this isn't a vec. In fact, I probably don't need to say what the type is and just let it be. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and that that made those RPSs instead of. Oh, interesting. I hadn't actually thought about next was going to give us the actual value, not a pointer to the value. When we, co when we collected and used the square brackets, we get references into the slice. But when we use the iterator, we get the actual value. So it makes this whole sharing business go away. That's kind of nifty. That is kind of nifty. And then that means this is need, this wants to be a reference because we are going to pass a reference to um, game score. But whoa, hang on, that didn't seem to be the thing that I thought it was going to be. Yeah, it says borrow. Okay, borrow, borrow. I can do borrow. Um, uh, but it doesn't like having me borrow here. Why should it care? Um, okay, I'm gonna wah, 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 cargo build. Mutable? We're not muting nothing. Oh, parts needs to be mutable. Uh-huh. So there was a problem there that I did not catch right away. But I don't think... Um, that doesn't... Okay, here we go. Uh, so we've got our move. Aha! Got it. I see now. And that is your comment, um, uh, Izitsu, is where I, I hadn't noticed that we had our move here and here. I was focused on the their move part, and that's what was getting me messed up. So we have this takes ownership. This moves the value here, converting it to E32. So it's not available there anymore. Um, since this doesn't change it, we don't need it anymore after the call, Izitsu is suggesting swapping the order of the addition. And that will allow us to use our move here and then do the casting. Alternatively, we could switch the order of the arguments to game score, although that would probably be bad. I think you'd 
you would tend to want to think of the first as being your move and the second as being their move. And if you swap them, I would certainly get hopelessly confused. Um, so I think swapping the order of the addition probably makes more sense. We could also copy or clone something to make that problem go away, but let's just roll with this for now. Awesome. And then Izitsu also suggested making this from stir because it just turned into from stir. I had initially been thinking I would be converting from a character, but I'd have to like extract the character from the string and who wants to do that? So um, we can just do from stir. Um, and uh, then our from our from method becomes from underscore stir and it takes a ampersand stir. So we would this becomes from underscore stir and that blur it's not happy. Not all trait. Oh, it probably returns a, a result type. Is that true? Wah, wah, wah. What? Oh, we're in impulse. That's totally not helpful. Um, let's look at Fromster. Fromster does return a result type. Okay. Um, and it returns self and self colon colon error. Okay. So result self. And now I think. Is that gonna work with anyhow? What do we? Oh, and oh no. Missing er in implement. Oh, we have to say with the type of. Uh, that's right. So this is saying self er. Um, and then we have to say what the er type is. Oops. So I could say anyhow er error. Um, and then because this is anyhow error, I can go back to here because that's just another way of writing anyhow error is the error type yes nice okay that's cool yay team um and now we have grumpiness oh this has now got to be from stir and that's now a result type so we have to deal with the fact that either or both of the parts could be results. Um, and what, how did we, what did we deal with? So we collected into results and then question marked yesterday or Wednesday I mean we could always presumably unwrap twice right that's going to be gross yeah so unwrapping twice works but isn't very pretty um Well, I think we're going to want a result type here anyway. And so then maybe some question marks and contacts would be the right thing to do here um, when we get there. So maybe I'm going to ignore that. Um, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking is that we'll leave the, the icky unwrap now and we'll tidy up after we've got things actually working. Okay, so, and I guess I don't really need to 
um, give that a name we can just get rid of all that and the semicolon okay so now we got to do some to do's um, and I think the only to do's are this pair of to do's here um, so we have to map from strings to RPS um, so I think we could just do this with a match match C and we could say A is RPS rock and we're going to need uh, we don't something bad happens that's going to be like bail um, illegal uh, character for rock paper scissors so something like that oh and this can't be rps rock this has to be okay rps rock whoa that did not work Oh, that's because I've got this here, right? Okay. Yeah, so that... Whoops, no, I'm still not happy. Um, oh, I did. I need two colons because I can't type. Wah, wah, wah. So something like that. Now, there is a way to have two things here, I thought. But now I don't remember what that looks like. Rust match. Rust by example. Try that. Oh, vertical bar. Bingo. Um, so I could say A or X should be rock. Oh, oh look at that. It worked. Um, B or Y should be OK. RPS. Paper. C or Z should be OK, RPS, uh, scissors. And then if we have nothing, if we don't have one of those characters, and they are caps, I think, right? Yes, they're caps. Um, so if those we don't have one of those six characters we'll be like no bad things happen um and the anyhow bail will return and anyhow error and life is spiffy and then uh we have to implement game score and so if if the numeric value is bigger than if our numeric value is bigger than their numeric value we win unless we're playing rock and they're playing no actually yeah if our numeric value is bigger than theirs we win unless we're scissors and they're rock so that one's sort of an oddball because uh, it wraps around. Um, so we could... Um, hmm. Let we win be... Uh, their move... Actually, can I just do a direct comparison? Oh, actually, I, can, I ought to be able to implement um, a comparison trait. And then I would just be able to say um, like self greater than their move. Um, and we just need to impl... Uh, partial ord 
So if we impl partial ord, then we could just use that. So let's do that. Impl partial ord for RPS. Oh, I wonder if we can derive that. No, we can't because we have to put in the oddball wraparound. Um, uh, this question has tripped up many coders because they weren't reading the problem description fully. Not sure if it's tripped you up yet, though. Um, now, uh, hello, Ikapur. Um Is implementing partial or legal? Legal in what sense? I mean, as long as we get it right. Um, I mean, my so my idea is we know rock defeats scissors. So in some sense, rock is greater than scissors. Scissors is greater than paper and paper is greater than rock. And so my idea is to implement that so that that logic so that we can just say that we win uh, if self is greater than their move. And then if we win, then we get six points. If we tie, we get three points. Otherwise, we get um, zero points because that just means we lose. Um, so I'm not sure I understand the, um, uh, the legal question, but I don't see why it wouldn't be. Um, uh, so we have to implement uh, partial comparison. Uh, oh, it's going to be an option because it's partial ord. Uh, that's mildly annoying. Um, hmm. Then I don't remember what does this do? Because that's not going to return an option. Hmm. And an ordering is we have less, equal, or greater, which is actually what we want. We'd like less, equal, or greater, because then we just match off of that. Oh, that's actually kind of nice. So, okay, let's try to make that happen. So, um, now I'm going to do this with an if. I think we probably want to do it with a match. I think that would be the more rust way to do it. Um, so if that's probably easiest, our val is self as u8, let their val is other as u8. Um, if our val is greater than their val, or, um, oops, I didn't want that. I wanted, actually, I just want it right up here. If our val is greater than their val, or our val is rock. RPS. Oh no, I guess self. Ah, rock. And their val is self scissors. So if either of those things are true, then our result is some ordering colon colon greater. Boom. Else, if our val equal equal their val, then some ordering equal. Else, some ordering 
less. Um, check the docs on par oh transitivity evil little transitivity oh I don't need parentheses because this is not Java and that will apply here so yes let's go look at partial ords discussion of transitivity make sure that there's not something rust partial ord an expectation um, yeah so I see what you're saying if there's gonna be yeah so the comparison has to satisfy transitivity and ours doesn't because we have the the loop so we can't actually use partial order very cool observation thank you Izitsu I had not thought about that but yeah now odds are in our limited use of it, it would not have gotten us in trouble. Um, I suspect that, you know, it would be a problem if you did something like sorting, because how would you sort rock, papers, and scissors? Because you have an infinite loop, basically. Um, you have a cycle in the graph, uh, the order in graph. Um, we're not doing anything that fancy, so possible we would have gotten away with it. Um, but still probably not a good idea so we're not really implementing partial ord um and i assume we can't implement ord for exactly the same reason ord must also yeah ord assumes transitivity as well which is not surprising so so we can't impl partial ord. We really just need some function in RPS that's like um, we win. Um, so we don't want the impl, and we'll want to change the name. Boom. So we could say like we win. Um, and really there's no reason to have this be an option i mean they needed it to be an option but i don't think we needed it to be an option um i think we just return an order um and why are we grumpy oh uh right because these are uh, is that going to get me in trouble? No, it didn't. Um, oh, I said our vowel. Ah, uh, right. Actually, we don't need the... We want self and other here. Um, but we don't implement eek, but I bet we ought to be able to derive eek or partial eek. Um, I assume that enums can derive partial eek, he says, hoping. And well, this would be self dot we win their move. Uh, but it didn't like that. Oh, we need eek and partial eek. Hold it. Mm -hmm. The trait partial eek is not. Oh, it's a reference. Ah. And if I do that, I'm going to be okay. Yeah. Okay. Boom. Yeah, there we go. Um, and now we don't need sum anymore. We can just return the ordering value. Boom, 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 boom. But now, 
actually really this is I ought to just do the scoring here um, and this is essentially the scoring this is essentially game score um, got a moving out of yeah um, so really this ought to just be game score and instead of returning ordering I just ought to return the values in question so if we win we get six points if they if it's a tie we get three if we lose we get zero uh, this goes away we still have this sh oh why do we only have it once oh because it's the name change And we have the sharing problem. Well, we could make this clonable. Yeah. Um, so, um, clone. And then we can self dot clone and dot clone. And I think my stars are going to be in the wrong place now. Um, oh, so maybe I. Oh, and then maybe I don't even need to explicitly call clone. Let me back out of the clone business and if we make this copy where are we copy um oh am i gonna need copy and clone That's not a helpful message. Oh, derive copy. Oh, no, I said, all oh, right, I get it. It's saying clone and copy, which is exactly what you said. And I just lost track of where I was. Now it copies it when it needs to, and everything's great. Okay. Um, cool. So we have our enum and uh we can parse from strings into it we can compute the game score oh this if presumably we we ought to be able to do this with um a match uh i don't know if that would be considered better um what I have is working this is sort of ugly I almost be tempted to make a function out of it but we'd have to pass four arguments in and that would be kind of gross so I think I'm not going to bother with that right now um is it to argues match would be worse how does process game look I think we're done um because we get the two parts I mean, we've got the unwraps to take care of um and then we compute the game score plus our move um and i think that oh got tripped up as well um let's look at the problem statement the winner is the player with the highest score your total score is the sum of your scores for each round and so we are computing the sum of the scores for each round here. Um, the score for a single round is the score for the shape you selected. And that should be this part here. Uh, no. Uh, plus 
the score for the outcome of the round. Zero if you lost, three if it was a draw, and six if you won. Which should have been this part here, I thought. Whose scores for each round? Read the second paragraph. Since you can't be sure if the elf, if you were to follow the strategy guide. Oh, duh. Yes, I totally see it. I reversed the two pieces. The first column is their move, and the second column is my move. And I wrote everything as if it was the other way around. Yeah, so right here, that needs to be their move, and this needs to be our move. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Well done. Thank you for saving me the trouble of... Um, uh, <clears throat> sigh. Thank you for the catch. Greatly appreciated. So, now it might work. Um, cargo run day two. Do, 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 do. Whoa, we died somewhere. Um, line 64, we tried calling unwrap on a nun. Line 64, one of these did not work. Um, and that has to have been, let's see, so parts dot next returns an option. So I think that's got to be the none because this is going to be unwrapping a result type. So we must have gotten nothing from next somewhere. So, um, I wonder if, I wonder if I end up with a blank line down here and that that's what's messing it up. I'm curious. Haha, -ha. that seemed to be the problem. Um, so, there's a score. I don't know if it's right, but they'll tell us. So we're going to pop this puppy in. Boom, ba -doom, ba -doom. submit. That's not the right answer. Our answer is too high. If you're stuck, make sure you read, you're using the full input data. There are also some general tips. Um, so it's almost certainly not that we're not reading the full input data because that would give us a score that was too low, presumably, not too high. I wonder if, did I, is the order problem somehow an issue elsewhere don't see how because if we've labeled these correctly then this should be right hmm hmm now the 11,000, right? That's what we submitted. Oh, I guess I could have gotten that here. 11,000. And there are 2,500. Yeah, so that's plausible. You would maybe expect an average of something like four points per game which would be about 10,000 points. So at least we're ballpark in the neighborhood. It doesn't seem like we're way off. Um, Um, 
No, their move would be what we get by calling next. Um, said we were too high. Let me confirm that, but I'm pretty sure it said we were too high. Yeah, your answer is too high. So, it's presumably in the parsing or the scoring. Well, I mean, I guess that's all this problem is, is parsing and scoring. Um, so we're splitting by new lines. And then process game takes a new line and returns the U32. And we add up all those U32s. And that should be our answer. Um, and process game takes the line, splits it on white space, maps RPS from stir, and then we get their move is the first one, and our move is the next one. Then we take our move and call game score with their move as an argument, game score with their move as an argument, and we also add our move as a U32. And game score gets our value, their value. If our value is greater than their value, so if we're three and they're two. Oh, 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 oh. No, 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 no. I, it's not arbitrarily greater than like here three is greater than one and it's saying that scissors beats rock and that's just not true we need our value to be one greater than their value um or this weird thing um so our value equals their value plus one or we wrap around and I bet that we could we could probably do something with subtraction and modular arithmetic because and eliminate this whole second test because this would be our value minus their value equals one oops I'm supposed to admit a minus um, and in the case where we're rock and they're scissors, one minus three is negative two, which is one mod three. So there's probably something that we could do with quotient remainder here. Let's leave it be for a second and see if we can get it to work. And then we'll try to clean that up. Um, so yeah, I bet that's the issue is I was assuming it was strictly a greater than relationship, but the scissors rock thing um, blows that up. So, boom, boom, boom. Whoa. Attempt to subtract with overflow on line 36. So, oh, because we set these as U8s, we can't do subtraction. If I made these i8s, then I could do subtraction and the world would not explode. Um, yeah, let's do that. Boom. And we get a smaller number, 10595. And that might be the right answer. We'll find out. Boom, boom, boom. Hey, that was the problem. So I had us winning in cases where we shouldn't win. Um, so now let's actually make a test out of that. Um, ooh. Or maybe we just make a test out of games, test game score, um, rather than testing all of this right now. But I do... I think I want to test um, CFG test bah, bah, mod score tests boom boom 
you superstar test um, FN rock oh do I want to do all of these uh, uh, that sounds gross um, well let's do rock scissors uh, so assert eek bang six if we have rps actually we could say um we play rock let's just do that rps rock mm, dot game score rps scissors so we would expect to win if we play sit against scissors and we would let's put the um let's, let's make these just rock paper scissors rock paper scissors so if we both play rock we expect to get three we lose if they play paper and we win if they play scissors so that the tests and whoa something bad happened oh we've got a oh, no, I didn't want to do that undo um, these need to be borrowed or references uh, and now fingers crossed doodly doodly do we passed the test good now can we then change this to be uh, the the quotient or something of that difference rust quotient Uh, where, where, where? Uh, remainder rem the remainder operator. Uh, now the question is, hold it. Yeah. Question is, does it do the right thing if you have negative values? Um, when this is in split slice, this doesn't seem right. They want like remainder on numbers. Um, Rust modulo. Try that. Mod integer mod. Uh, come on. Let's try this then. Uh, that's pretty old. I don't I like something a little newer. Doodly doodly do. Uh, okay, so this is where I was concerned if we're not careful yeah negative value is going to give us a negative value and i don't want that oh ah but 
double percent. Is that actually a thing? Oh, no, this is an RFC, so I don't know if this is a thing. Um, So I don't know if that ever happened. Operators and symbols. Possibly useful? Nope. Double percent never happened. Arithmetic remainder. Rust arithmetic remainder. Come on. What? It's a lot more futzing than I would have expected. Modulus. And that totally doesn't tell me what the how the negatives get handled. <sighs> oh. Hmm. So you're suggesting modding both sides. So, okay, so if I do this, oops, I'm going to need a pair of prints here. The concern, oh, actually, what if we rust playground? Oh, uh, I don't need any of that stuff. So, um, uh, we need a main on this to be able to do anything? Yeah, I think so. Main, or fun, main, print line. Um, negative one, mod three. Oh, I didn't want to save that, what am I doing? have it so we get a negative one we don't get a one which is what we wanted uh, now Ikapor's idea says oh 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 actually maybe a simpler solution what if we always add three up front then we will always get a positive value Yeah, I think maybe that would do. And I think that's doing kind of the same thing that you're suggesting, Ikapur. I think we ought to be able to add three. And now, well, let's see what the tests do. Boop, boop, boop. They pass. Um, so if our value is one greater than their value, then this becomes four, four mod three is one. 
But if our value is rock and their value is scissors, we get a negative two plus three gives us one again. Anything else gives us not one. So if we are rock and they are paper, then we get a negative one plus three is two, two mod three is two. So I think that actually gets us where we want to go is we just add um, the size of the, um, the value being modded by um, and that'll guarantee, we can add as many multiples of three as we want um, without changing the value. And as long as we add something big enough to make this positive, then we're guaranteed to get the positive value there. So I think that would be fine. Zippity doo -dah. Um, Let's run it again and make sure we get the same value, which we should, and we do. So I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, that is part one, and it is 3.11. So we've taken it over an hour to do the first part, because um, that's what happens. Oh, and we still haven't done the, the, the air handling. We still have all these unwraps. So I expect if we do cargo, clippy, we get all kinds of noise about um, unwrappy bits. Oh, so many, so many things. Holy moly. Um, oh, this is a lot of stuff. Uh, oh, we should be using self there. That makes sense. Um, this could be a constant function. So I must say one thing I've never taken the time to look up is what's the value of a constant function? Why does that, why is it useful to mark them as constant? I assume it's a performance thing because that's usually what you care about. But I have not ever looked up sort of what exactly that does for us. Um, but apparently we can make game score constant. Well, hey, let's take care of some things. So we don't need comp ordering anymore. We made that go away. And this was self. And game score could be const fun. Um, wada, wada, wada. Oh, so we could pass by value since it's a one byte. We don't need, oh, oh, what this is the game score. So since we're passing a single byte, passing a reference is going to be multi bytes and we could just get away with, away with this. And since we've implemented copy, in fact, I bet we could do that as well. And do we still the same? Oh, hey, we've got a problem. Um, oh, when we call game score, we reference them. Bum -ba -dum, bum -ba -dum, bum -ba and we still have a problem. 79. Oh, that's where we actually call it to do actual work. Okay. So that didn't break the world. Clippy. Oh, scroll the wrong place. Um, Oh, so we didn't use self in game score. Clearly that is a thing I haven't gotten entirely into the habit of. Um, oh, we could use this char on split on line 63. Yeah, that makes sense. I also find myself getting clippy frequently is like, you could do that. I'm like, okay, fine. Um, and, and then we get to the unwraps that we want to make go away. Okay, cool. And Zitsu says you can use them in statics. I assume that's reference to the, the function game score. Um, 
so if it's static, it has to be evaluable at compile time. Oh, and because there's no internal state here, game score will always return the same thing for the same arguments. So it could be used in a static context if we handed it two moves in a static context, it would be able to run this and know that it was getting the right value. Oh, that's interesting. Cool. Um, let's see. The splits can be lines instead. Probably. Um, so there, there's a lines thing. I'm not sure I knew there was a lines thing. Dot lines. Look at that. An iterator over the lines. Yeah, duh. Yeah. That is definitely an improvement. Thank you. Good catch. Um, and that gives us the same answer. Yay, team. Um, so that's nifty. So now, and it's interesting that, that um, Clippy was happy fussing about the string being converted to a character, but didn't sort of get that we could have just used lines instead. Hmm. Well... You know, Clippy does a lot. If Clippy doesn't do everything, such is the way of the world. So we want to do something about these unwraps. Um, we probably want this to become a result. U32, so that we can do some question mark stuff. Um, now. This one, we can get rid of that unwrap, I think, is just a question mark. And I want actually will game score. Does game score need to return, want to return a result? No, there is no real reason to do that. So we'll just put an OK around this. Um, so I could pour ass. References are eight bytes on x64. Are they really? Eight bytes. Yes, yes. Um, to get better performance passing copies of the data if it is less than 64. I don't know. I was arguably kind of blindly following what Clippy said. Um, but I mean, a reference is almost never, so they're using eight bits, one byte for this enum because there's only the three fields. So they can get away with one byte and there is no system in the universe that's using, uh, one byte address space, right? Cause that would only give you the ability to address 256 bytes. And that's, you know, uh, we, we, we haven't had machines with that kind of address space since people were building things out of vacuum tubes. So the, ad, the, the address size is, in any realistic universe, going to be a lot bigger than one byte. Um, I mean, you probably an address space of 32 bits is the most, I mean, it, as small as you're probably ever going to see realistically these days. And even that would be pretty rare. Um, so, and that, then you're passing one byte instead of four. So I guess, um, I mean, it might be interesting to do a benchmarking thing and see what the um, performance dif if there's even a measurable performance difference between passing self and um, reference to self there. I have no idea. I'll make a note. I don't know if I'll ever get around to it, but um, it's an interesting question. Um, benchmark passing self. 
i.e. an 8-bit value instead of reference to self i.e. a 64-bit value um, does it really make a difference? Clippy seemed to think so, but it would be interesting, interesting to see what the actual uh, impact is. Okay. Um, well, and one thing that I'm, I'm, that confuses me, confuse that I, I'm at least uncertain about is, you know, in a lot of systems, everything is done in full words anyway. Anything of consequence is done in full words anyway. And like the stack frame elements, I could imagine needing to be full words so that even if we're passing a byte, the stack frame slot that's being used for that value might easily be a full word, which is the same as a reference. And so what has it bought us? Um, so I, yeah, I, I'm a little uncertain about that as well. Um, uh, which would be why actually performing some benchmarking would be useful. But then if you're really into it, you probably decompile source code and look at what it's actually doing um, on the stack. And I I like not thinking about the programming at that level. I like thinking about programming at this level. Um, do things for me. Magic will occur. That makes me happy. So um, I so I, but I would be interested in the um, uh, uh, the benchmarking side of it, like see if it actually um, have to file in a buffer you can call lines on that that return results of a string. However, the default buffer is eight kilobytes, so end up buffering the entire file, and the separate string allocations may be worse than reading the entire file of the string. Gotcha. Yeah, you know, I mean, I guess in this case we could make the buffer really small, but then are we actually going to be doing a ton of reads to, from the disk? And that's almost certainly not a desirable thing. And if we're not, it's because some part of the operating system is caching the value, which means the whole thing's in memory anyway. So bleh. I think I'm just going to not worry about it. Um, uh, I think we're fine. Um, oh, why do we have compiley bits that are grumpy? What did I do? Uh, what did I do? I didn't think I changed anything. Wah, wah, wah. Hello, what did I do? That's weird. Um, oh, okay. oh, it's, I know, I know. It's because we added the, the question mark here. So this is now a result, and that means these are results, and we can't sum. Oh, no, but we can sum results, can't we? Um, I thought that we could say, oh, but it wouldn't be a dot u32. It would be a result u32. And then we can say question mark on that. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so that still runs says the same thing 
And then, so then we've got these unwraps, um, which we could, um, one way to deal with that would be to attach a context, um, because then we can question mark them. Uh, and then do we get two question marks in a row? That's sort of weird. Um, so if I say dot context, um, missing move online we'll fix that in a second now that oh right and then we would need two question marks that's weird i don't know that i've ever seen two question marks like that and i'm not sure i like it <laughs> um Hmm. Oh, you know, I bet I could put a context here. No, because I can't put a question mark in there because that's in the, um, the lambda that's being passed into the map. So I can't put a question mark inside there and have it come out here. Um, wow. Huh. Well, so I really wanted with context, right? Um, and this would be missing move on format bang, missing move online. Uh, I should just be able to put a line in here, right? And let's go ahead and put you down there, put you there. What is going on? With context. Yeah. Oh, I'm missing a close print. That's my problem. So that's kind of icky, but uh, now one could argue that um, I should have a Missing second move on line. Line. Do 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 do. And that should probably say first move. I almost feel like there should be a function somewhere for that all that repetition, but um, yig. Okay. Now. So run. Yes. What does Clippy say? Clippy's happy. Clippy's like, all the question marks, we don't care. Um, but, humph. Okay. Well, then, Clippy's happy. We have plausible uh, air handling. Um, actually, if we go back and we put that other blank line in that gave me trouble before, we'll hopefully get a more, oh, oh, probably because switching to lines fixed that problem. Um, but if we were to say A here by itself, oops, not A, 
Um, then we would hopefully get a missing second move on that line. Cool. Um, and if we switch this to little a uh, illegal character, oh, we could actually say what the character was. That would be useful. Um, uh, where did that end up? That's up here. Um, so we probably want, I don't think Bale has, a, oh, it does have an implied format. Um, do, 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 um, so I should just be able to put C in there and we should get illegal character A for rock, paper, scissors. Cool. Um, And we used to now run. Oh, ah, now, because it's got a, a space, it's a truly empty line, then it doesn't return it. But if there was a space there, it returned it. Oh, that's interesting. And Clippy's still happy. I say we quit there and move on to part two, um, which probably means I ought to commit. Um, stage all changes. Got part one of day two working. Yay. So what is the other part? The other part is um, the second column says how the round needs to end. X means you need to lose. Y means you need to end the round in a draw, and Z means you need to win. Oh. Well, that's kind of annoying. Um, so the second column is how you need it to end. So X is lose, Y is draw, and Z is a win. Uh, so how do we want to deal with that? Um, so the parsing's got to change. Do we want a whole nother enum for win, lose, and draw? And then we could have a function that given the outcome and their move, we could compute our move. Do we need to compute? Yeah, we need to compute our move because the scoring, we need to know our score. Um, so, okay, yeah. And, or our move, and our move is necessary to compute our score. So if you had the uh, outcome and their move, you could compute your move. But from a tight perspective, the, the second column is really a different thing now. Uh... And a part of me would like it to still run as like I could run it and then we get both part one and part two, but we end up having to parse things totally differently. So it may be easier to just, um, rewrite it to work on part two and not try to have it do both at the same time. So, uh, outcome, uh, loss is zero, tie is three, win is six. Um, and when we Assuming we can get to the end here today, or when we get to the end, I would love to hear sort of about what differences there are between sort of what you did 
and what we end up doing. Um, so I guess outcome really ought to go below RPS. Boom. And now X, Y, and Z go away. Ah, come on. Um, oh, <laughs> what language were you using? I'm out of curiosity. I'm guessing like Haskell or something to that effect would be my suspicion. Ah, yes. So it would look totally differently. Um, and now we have X, Y, Z, and we would have, uh, what did they do? Um, X means you need to lose, draw. Um, so loss. Actually, I wonder if I should probably use the word name that the words that they used. So they say lose, draw, and win, right? Yeah. So lose, draw, and win. Okay. Um, And then we'll have that as our parsing. And then we're going to need to know for a given outcome and a given opponent move, we're going to have to compute our move. And that could go in either one of these, but I think there's two instances of RPS and only one instance of outcome. So I think I'll put it here. Um, uh, our move, uh, which takes self, which is their move. Actually, I'm going to call it their move. Oh, it probably, does it have, it probably has to be called self. Um, and outcome, outcome, and Turn to self. Um, I make a note to myself. Um, desired outcome and returns the move we would need to make to generate that result. Boom. Okay. So our move, um, is there an easy way to do this? Hmm. If outcome is a win, we want to subtract one from their move. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we only have three cases. No, we have lots of cases. We have nine cases, potentially. And that's where I'm thinking if outcome... If outcome is win, we essentially want to subtract. No, we want to add one to their move, but we got to deal with the wrapping around problem. If outcome is loss, we want to subtract one, but again, deal with the wrapping problem. And if outcome is draw, then we return the same thing. So maybe a match on that Um, and certainly, for example, if we had outcome draw, then we could just return self. 
Um, that part's easy. Um, um, just a. Uh, Oh, actually, I probably could just do it. Put it to do here, right? Um, so that part simple. If the outcome is win, then our move needs to be one more than their move with the modulo problem. So one plus self mod three, that'll totally not be the right type. So this we can't add because we need this to be as mu eight. And this, isn't the right type because it's not an RPS. Um, can we go this way? Didn't like that. Non-primitive cast can only be done with primitive types. So you would do an inner match here. Which we could totally do. Um, I'm just trying to avoid like listing all nine cases, but um, so we could match self, um, and if self is um, RPS paper, then we need to do RPS scissors for ourselves. If it's RPS rock, we need to do RPS paper. And if it's RPS um, scissors, then we need to do RPS rock. So I mean, that works. And then we do the same thing again. Oh. Or just match on a tuple. Yeah, that would be another possibility is list all the tuples. I actually kind of prefer this to the tuples here. Um, not by a lot, but I think... Um, what happened there? Wow. Outcome. So we lose... Um, So if we're paper, if they play paper and we want to lose, then we'd be rock. If they pay, play rock and we want to lose, then we are paper. And if they play scissors and we want to lose, then we play... No, no. If they play rock and we want to lose, then we play scissors. And if they play scissors and we want to lose, we play paper. Because, yeah, okay. So, paper cuts. Oh, rock squashes paper. Scissors. No, but these are our moves. And these are their moves. Right? Um, so, if we want to lose, rock... Yes, right. Paper covers rock. Rock squashes scissors. Scissors cuts paper. That makes sense. And then these should be the other way around. Scissors cut paper. Paper covers rock. Rock squashes scissors. Okay. So then that should work. And we don't need the to-do anymore. Um, I still think there's a math trick that would simplify this. But bleh, um, we'll not mess with it now. Um, okay, so then somewhere down here we have to have 
the actual game. So we read the file, we process the game. So processing game changes. So we get the parts. Oh, we don't map RPS across both parts. We have to apply RPS from stir to the first piece and um, yeah, so really this I think goes away and here we say next dot um, RPS no from stir no that's not going to work because it's not a the from thing takes an argument it's not a self yeah so we actually would have a from around that um Um, yeah, that actually might be the right thing to do. Um, I mean, we could let their move stir is parts dot next dot, and then we would steal the with context here you know um, so we probably want that and that boom whoa we are all full of noise um, let's comment all of this out for a second make sure I know where the noise is coming from where are you I am missing a close friend um, okay so And so if I put a question mark there, that gives us the string. And then I can say their move is uh, their uh, RPS from stir their move stir. And then question mark that, and I get an RPS. Um, oh, so just dot parse, really? Rawr? parses this string slice into another type, so I probably have to say what type I want it to be. Look at that. That is nifty. I didn't realize that was a thing. That's pretty cool, actually. I like that. Um, whoops. Bum, 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 bum. Then we'll have to do the same thing. Oh, but it's not quite the same thing. So we want the outcome stir to be parts dot next dot with context format bang missing outcome on line line oops I want a tick mark line close tick um, question mark semicolon um, oh 
Oh, much nicer. Yes, yes, yes. So we could just make this dot parse. Oh, and I didn't realize the part without knowing parse existed. Oh, and I guess we will have to say we could just do this. Right. And then another question mark. Without knowing that parse existed, I didn't know that I could get away with chaining, but that is much better. Um, so next with that context dot parse outcome boom but we're not happy oh that's because i got a semicolon here i don't want anymore and look at that very cool i like that now um the score is oh so we need to compute our move let our move be their move dot uh, our move outcome. Boom. And now the scoring should be the same. Yeah, okay. And that all seems to compile. I do like that we're now processing errors kind of one at a time in a more sensible way, I think. Um, and I'm quite sure that Wagafa's um, Haskell solution is like four lines long and, and much fancier than this. Still not thrilled about that. Well, let's see if this works. I think that we're hopefully in the neighborhood. Actually, yeah, let's run it. See if it works. 9541. Okay. Gonna work. Submit. Hey, we got the right answer. And we have eight minutes left. That's very exciting. Um so let's actually run Clippy and see if Clippy's grumpy. Uh, oh, Clippy is grumpy. Oh, Clippy's very grumpy. So our move could be constant. Um, now it wants us to have a reference? Really? Um, oh, and we've got RPS everywhere when we should have self. Um, okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. And we're 131 lines with the little test code, not a lot. So, um, uh, but we also have some comments and blah, blah, blah. So I'm not too worried about it. So let's see. Our move could be constant. And there was a whole bunch of um, in our move there's a whole lot of opportunities for self action da -da 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 -da. I should have done a search and replace but we did this instead oh no 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 there we go um, Yes, you can't really take Python as easily and make it one line. Um, I hadn't thought about it, but is Rust returns are never significant in Rust, so you could just take every Rust program and make it one line, one long, miserable, terrible line out of it, I think. I don't recommend um, So why does it want a reference there? And that was exactly what we weren't doing. 
And now that'll break right here. Oh, because we didn't derive copy on outcome. Maybe. Hmm. Now, if we then, no, no, it was up. If we make that go away and that go away. What does Clippy say? Uh, Clippy's happy. Interesting. So if we derive copy, then Clippy's happy with us just passing these things around. But if we don't derive copy, it wants to have a reference. Huh. Interesting. So it just doesn't know, if we don't explicitly tell it to derive copy, it doesn't know how to do that. And so it encourages us to pass references. And since we call their move here, or our their move dot our move here, we can pass a reference here because we never refer to outcome later on. So we can give ownership of outcome to uh, the our move function because we don't need it again. If we did need it again, we'd have a problem. And then we would have gotten into needing to um, derive copy. But since we don't ever use it again, it didn't come up. Um, interesting. Interesting. Hmm. I'm going to make a note about that because uh, if we don't derive copy clone, then Clippy recommends passing a reference to our move up above. Okay. Well, it is 3.57. We've done another day. So at this rate, we're doing a day per session. Um, but, hey, you know, um, as Ugafa said, right, we're trying to take our time and, and do a good job and not just get it done. Um, so I'm not unhappy about that. Um, but it does mean this will probably take, um, well... 25 sessions, so that's 12 weeks. Um, <laughs> thanks, Lemon. Appreciate it. Um, nice to see you here. Uh, so, yeah, at this rate, we'll be doing this into the summer. Um, but that's fine. It'll be awesome. We'll have a wonderful time. So, um, okay, I'm going to call that quits. And you're awesome human beings. Thank you very much. Oh, um, that's good to know. I haven't actually been through them, so I don't know how much harder they get. So maybe this is like, at this rate, it'll take us until the beginning of the next advent of code. Um, but once classes start in August, my ability to stream eight hours a week is going to go uh, right through the window. Um so uh, I'm not sure how far we'll get either, but we will try. We'll see what we can do. Um, I like the idea of it at least. So, um, well, you're awesome people. People, thank you very much for being here. I will let you all go and enjoy the rest of your Saturday, if it's still Saturday where you live. 
And uh, we'll stream tomorrow from 10 to noon. Um, and uh, given the schedule, I think... I think we'll probably work on the evolutionary computation system in Rust. Um, I do still want to get back to um, ice repos, but um, uh, I've been pretty busy this week and have not gotten to uh, dealing with some of those issues here. So we'll probably do evolutionary computation and more trait stuff um, in the recombination part of the program. Thank you, Agafa, for the kind words. We'll see everybody later. Goodbye!